You know, I think it was G.K. Chesterton who said, uh, men are men, but man is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you really want to do inner work, if you really want to go to the core of why the world is so screwed up, it's because the male ego is just run riot. And uh, feminism as a political agenda, as a horizon of transcendence, has only begun to be explored. Uh, I really think that it's impossible to stress enough how, import how important it is to feminize the planet and to feminize ourselves. It's hard to put it across to people because even people think that they have dealt with this issue and they say, well, you know, we always go Dutch. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> There really has to be a recognition of the fact, and this gets me into more controversy, everything leads to controversy, I suppose, <laughs> but I really feel that monotheism is a horrible error, a nightmarish misunderstanding, not bad as a philosophical position, I mean, the drive for unity, but even a phrase like drive for unity is so laden with male chauvinist assumptions that uh, you have to wonder. Uh, uh, monotheism presents us with a model of God that is all-powerful, all-knowing, omniscient, and not to be questioned. Well, you don't have to have spent much time reading Jung to realize that our gods are images that give us permission concerning how we construct our personalities. And if you meet someone who is all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, and never wrong, you're dealing with a horse's ass of some sort. <laughs> you know, because nobody is like that. And yet that is the personality model that we are given permission to exemplify. And all men, or I don't want to say all men, but most men, including myself, go whole hog for this. And, and most women also. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this talk about empowering women, it, it to me is saying make them more masculine. We don't need to empower anybody. We have enough. The problem is to disempower the creeps that have all the power, not to hand the power over to some other group. So I think that the real planetary transformation of all the political institutions, and this would solve the problem of feeding people. Uh, I mean, women do not sell their breast milk to their children. It would solve uh, the problem of uh, destroying the earth. Women rarely set their houses on fire. It would solve the problem of war. War is abhorrent to women. This is why giving them political power has always been such a touchy thing, because they might try to grab the rules and change the rules of engagement. Uh, and women are present to wash the bodies of the dead, to give birth to new people. They're always there at the nitty-gritty. And men, uh, through the accident of de or design of biology, play a, v a somewhat peripheral role uh, in things. The proof of this is the parthenogenetic uh, adaptations of lizards where there are no males. You know, they just, they, it was so ancillary that it was eliminated. <laughs> so be forewarned as we enter the era of genetic engineering. Uh, 
And the pre-monotheistic model was philosophically messy, I grant you. It was, it was that there were many gods and many goddesses. All of nature was alive. It was bathed in mystery. Its measure could not be taken. And birth and death and migration, all these things came in their time. It was a kind of Taoistic recognition of the plurability of being, of the multiplicity of being. And then this fusion into the male-dominated family and uh, the emergence of language in a species with a male hierarchy has just created a tremendous empowerment of the, of the male ego. And uh, we're not talking about the guys hanging out down at the pool hall. I mean, I deal with people all the time who define themselves as enlightened, cleared, and so forth, and they're carrying around immense amounts of male chauvinism and unexamined attitudes in, uh, in the way they behave. And uh, some of you who are at Ojai may have heard me say, uh, a man may be a fool and not know it, but not if he's married. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is a clue as to where spiritual guidance should come from. I mean, uh, we've run it for 15,000 years, so now why not just stand slightly aside and listen with a slightly greater degree of attention? Uh, this will then give permission for this nurturing uh, kind of mothering morphogenetic field to make its impact felt rather than this divisive, sharp-edged, uh, competitive kind of model. <laughs>